I took all the research articles and announcements in AI that went out this past week and condensed it down to the coolest ones to share with you. I simplified everything so that you and everyone else can understand it easily. Today we'll look into how researchers hacked ChatGPT and BARD to bypass their safe filter and produce harmful content. Plus we'll look at how AI can easily guess your password just from hearing you type. Also we're going to talk about Microsoft's new generative AI that can take in multiple inputs and spit out multiple outputs, including text, image, video, and audio. We'll learn about why it's still a challenge for AI to learn how to communicate with animals. And finally, we will look at how autonomous robots are being developed to explore the ocean depths and automatically track marine animals. This is super exciting, so let's dive right in. In this first article, researchers discovered a way to make AI chatbots like ChatGPT and Bard misbehave. They found a method to automatically make these models produce harmful content Unlike previous methods, this new approach is automated and can generate a large number of attacks. The researchers found that by adding a specific string of text to a prompt, they could easily bypass the safety measures of multiple popular chatbots. Here's an example in action. So let's say you want to get ChatGPT to do this. Now, if you just type in the prompt directly, of course it's going to say, I'm sorry, I can't assist you with that request. However, if you add this, now you can bypass the safety filter and it would actually give you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to steal someone's identity, which is, of course, very dangerous. So this article shows us how relatively easy it is to kind of hack and manipulate these popular chatbots for malicious purposes. All right, the next article is even crazier. So researchers in the UK created this deep learning model that can predict what you type just by hearing your typing sounds. The researchers trained their AI by recording sounds of keyboard presses on a Mac, and then using an image classifier called CoatNet. The model has 95% accuracy when recording keystrokes with a nearby smartphone microphone. That means if you're in a cafe or a library and you need to log in to your email or your bank account or whatever, a person nearby could easily record you with their smartphone microphone. They just need to record your typing sounds and then plug it into this AI and then they can guess with 95% accuracy your password. This AI also has a 93% accuracy when recorded over a Zoom call. So when you're on a Zoom call, think twice before you type in any passwords because the person on the other side could be recording it and then guessing your password using an AI. This type of attack is called an acoustic side channel attack and can be done easily using available equipment and algorithms. Needless to say, these attacks could expose sensitive information such as passwords, credit card details, etc. just by recording the sound of you typing. This, of course, raises concerns about the use of AI for cyber attacks, as AI can now make the process way easier and faster. To protect yourself from such attacks, the researchers suggest that you use randomized passwords, play some dummy or fake keystroke sounds when you're typing in your password, and to use two-factor authentication. Alrighty, this next article introduces Microsoft's new generative AI called Kodi, which is short for Composable Diffusion. For the mainstream AI models out there, they can only take in certain forms of input and spit out certain forms of output. So for example, ChatGPT, it can only take in a prompt, which is text, and spit out an answer, which is also text. Or Midjourney, which only takes in a prompt and then spit out an image. So where Kodi comes in is that it can take in multiple types of input and also spit out multiple types of outputs. It's not limited by any specific input or output types. So here are a few examples. Here we have the input, which is text plus audio plus image. So here's the text, here's the image, here's the audio. If you want to set the output to text plus image, well, here's what you get. So here's the text and here's the image, right? Here's another one. So. This is audio plus image, and this is turning it into text plus image. So here's the audio. So just someone playing the piano, and then here's a nice little forest. 
So the text would be playing piano in the forest, and the image would be some dude playing a piano in the forest. So this just opens up a new set of possibilities you can do with generative AI. All right, the next article I found pretty interesting. So as we all know, AI has made pretty huge advancements in only the past few months, right? Now we are able to generate hyper-realistic images. It can easily pass medical and bar exams. It can even manage a business and outcompete the best CEOs out there. But what about talking to animals? Can AI learn that yet? Well, this article argues that we're not really there yet, and it's more challenging than you think. And this is because all of our current language models, including ChatGPT, Bard, Llama, etc., they use natural language processing models or NLPs behind the scenes, which are trained on human languages, right? So these NLPs they basically help interpret text and speech of human languages. Now, to translate from one language to another, let's say from English to German, NLP requires a parallel corpus, which is the technical term for a translation guide, to accurately translate between different languages. Without it, the structure and intent of the translation might not match. This article argues that the challenge of translating animal sounds into human language is significant due to the lack of parallel data. In other words, even though animals do communicate, of course, their communication systems are very different from the human language. For example, chickadees, they have complex communication systems with open-ended vocal structures, and these birds can communicate a variety of information in different contexts. We don't know like the linkage of what they are chirping about to English, and since we are lacking this parallel data, it's really hard to build any translation models using AI, at least currently. However, efforts are underway, so there's this thing called the Dolphin Communication Project. Which is gathering more data and context for animal calls using advanced technology. Okay, and last but not least, our final article. This is also super interesting. A lot of people might not know this, but our oceans still remain vastly unexplored, especially the deepest parts. That's because the conditions there are extreme. For example, super high pressure, and this prohibits any humans from staying there for very long. But why do you even need to send humans down there when you can send an automated bot, right? So these researchers, they programmed this reinforcement learning model to enable these underwater robots to locate and track marine objects and animals automatically. These can access the deepest parts of the oceans where humans cannot easily go. Once deployed, these bots can help us gather data on what exactly is down there. It can fill in some of our knowledge gaps on well, what are these deep ocean ecosystems like, and how do they help CO2 capture, and how does that affect climate change? And that's all for the coolest AI news this week. If you enjoyed this content, remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, we built a site where you can search for all the AI tools out there. Check it out at ai-search.io.